Hi guys, in today's video we are going to talk about what I've been up to this year. I built the entire onboard power supply as well as the steering system. Here I've added 4 motorcycle batteries. Each of them outputs 12 volts, so I can get up to 48 volts DC. Their capacity is 20 amp hour. I've designed a specific bracket to mount them on the tank. These batteries will provide power for all the onboard systems. Not all systems require the same input voltage. For instance, I need 48 volts for the steering motor, 24 volts for the engine fan, 12 volts for the engine ignition, and 6 volts for the control units. This custom electrical distribution system provides these four voltages. I used four household circuit breakers to protect the batteries and to be used as switches. I had used regular switches at first, but they would burn up as they are not made to handle such high currents. I've also designed a multiple output system so that I can easily plug and unplug any device on any grid. Here's the brain of the tank, the main control board. This unit receives the signal from the remote control and translates the commands into signals for the onboard systems. It's made of an Arduino board with a shield right here a LoRa radio module with its antenna, a VGA connector to easily plug and unplug the gearbox, and a small power distribution you need for the servos. This whole assembly is mounted on four silent blocks to reduce vibrations which could damage the electronic components. This is the electric motor control unit. It provides the power for the electric motor and the rotation direction based on the signal from the Arduino board. I've added a dividing wall to separate the engine compartment from the rest of the tank as it will need to be air-cooled later. I've built a custom engine ignition control, which you can see here. It has three positions just like on a car, off, on and start. I have a similar switch on the remote which also has on, off and start position. The switch's start position is spring-loaded. Let's give it a try. Then I can switch it off whenever I want. Just the same push. Now let's talk about the steering system. There are two ways you can steer a tank. You can either brake on one side, or you can use a double differential steering system. I chose the latter for efficiency. Here's the steering system. This is the motor. A first stage to reduce speed and increase torque. A similar second stage right here. These are the two output shafts. They are separated in the middle and rotate in opposite direction. On the first one, I used a roller chain to keep it rotating in the same direction. Whereas on the second one, I used cogs to invert the rotation direction. These two sprockets will rotate at the same speed, but in the opposite direction. This is how it goes. direction and this is how I'm going to steer the tank. This is the main transmission shaft. It receives both the gearbox's power and the steering system's power. Then it redistributes the power to the output sprockets which drive the tracks. For instance, if the gearbox drives the main shaft at 100 rpm, the output sprockets will also rotate at 100 rpm each, in the same direction. Now, when using the electric steering system, we can increase the speed of one sprocket and reduce the speed of the other. If the steering system now runs at 20 rpm, then one output sprocket will rotate at 120 rpm and the other one at only 80 rpm. 
If you want to know more about the gearbox, you can check out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you next time.